We're going to move on to the box office report for the weekend. I so, actually haven't seen these numbers, so I'm quite excited. Oh, you're quite yeah. excited, eh? Okay, so uh, at number one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 got 60.5 million. Uh, the Super Mario Bros. movie got 13 million. Uh, in third, Book Club, the next chapter, got 6.5 million. Fourth, Evil Dead Rise, 3.7 million. And fifth, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, got 2.5 million. Hmm. So, yeah, what do you think about these results? Was that less than 50% drop? Uh, yeah, it was. I think it was. Because from my memory, it was 114, 115 area mm. um, opening weekend for Guardians. I believe it's a 48.9% drop. That's actually very good. Yeah, it's very That good. is very fucking good for <laughs> Guardians. Like, that absolutely, like, shat on mm. um, Ant-Man. Ant yeah, well, yeah. Drop. <laughs> I can't remember the drop for Black Panther, but I assume it was around about 50s. And uh, I think it was between 60 and 65. Uh, I know... Multiverse of Madness was over 65, and I think Thor was around 64, 65. Yeah, which, yeah. and all of those were literally the previous Marvel films, and for this to drop by 40 something percent. Yeah. Um, that's fucking fantastic. That mm. that shows that um, James Gunn is a key in box office draw yeah. in non COVID times, mm. and um, that there is faith in Marvel products for the future if, if they're good quality and they're yeah. good story, and you know, not like shit sort of. Jokes and yep. story and exactly. Whatnot. I don't want to go off too much on this, <laughs> but now that's good. I, I can't remember if we had a discussion on the whether it was on the podcast or just in private about like how this week's going to be massive for Guardians because we'll get mm. a good idea on how it's going to track. Yeah, um, based off this drop and because it dropped so pretty low, I think we mm. could see it to get. We could see the legs for it to get to like around the eight hundred to nine hundred mark. Yeah, maybe no. billion at a stretch. Yeah, at, at, at a stretch. We'd have to see because competition comes from next week. Fast yeah. X, Little Mermaid, Spider-Man. The, yeah. Every week there's a big release coming out from next week onwards. Yeah. But yeah, no, we did cover last um, podcast that um, whether, you know, the second week, what it was going to be would be a good indication on kind of the status of it. Because I think we both agreed last week that the opening is pretty disappointing. Mm -hmm. when you consider it open pretty significantly below the second one. But, you know, I did say that it could be collateral damage and now it, there's been a chance for the word of mouth to come through. Yeah. People are like, oh, this is good Marvel. This is good MCU. This is what we want. People people come back to it. Marvel pre game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you got you to think about it from two different perspectives. Obviously, the fans who like Marvel, who want to watch Marvel content, if they go and see Thor Love and Thunder, they're not, chances are they're not going to come back. Ant Man, Quantumania, they're, they're not going to come back to that because they obviously probably didn't have a good time with it. And then casual movie going to audiences are hearing everything from the fans and, you know, all the other reviews and whatnot and be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to spend my money elsewhere, especially in a time of, you know, cost of living and all that kind of stuff. Um, so. When you have the fans enjoying it and they're telling everybody else that word of mouth spreads and then the casual movie audience, audience jumps on board as well and they start watching it. Yeah. So this is a testament and it should send a message to Disney and Marvel to be like, hey, if you make good quality stuff, people are going to come watch. You're going to have good box office. It's unfortunate that you know MCU has taken a major reputation kind of hit recently because that way Guardians probably would have opened above what volume two did. Yeah. And then, and then it could have gone through to a billion, I feel. But I think under these figures and good daily holds alongside this excellent, um, very impressive second weekend hold, I think it, for now, it looks like it's definitely going to pass the first one. I was, I was worried if it had like a drop of these other movies yeah. that it would be, uh, that it might not even reach the first one, which is a major sign of um, concern. But, it could could stretch to past the second one, which I think is around like the eight seventy five mark. So it'll be an uphill battle with competition, but uh, word of mouth is the biggest driver for box office. I mean, we we know this; we keep seeing it time and time again. Yeah. No matter the competition, no matter any circumstances, word of mouth is your best friend. So um, it'll be interesting, and box office is going to get uh very fun over the next few months because there's always something coming out. Yeah. The, this yeah. week it's Fast X, right? Fast X, yeah. Yeah. And then I think there's something significant pretty much every week until July. That's yeah. good. It's gonna be gonna be good. All leading up to the Oppenheimer versus Barbie. 
the bigger oh. bro, that is a bigger battle than Godzilla v Kong and Batman v Superman. I feel like it's not a battle though. I feel it's more like a team up. What Batman? Oh, Oppenheimer and Barbie. Yeah, Barbie. yeah, it is. It's two great directors teaming up to release great films on the same day <laughs> to cement the cinemas are back. Yeah, like, you know, and man, they should do a crossover for it. The real world and Barbie is actually in the Oppenheimer world. How amazing would that be? That would be a toenail roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But in August, 